The huge problem we have here in the UK when it comes to politics is we have a two and a half party system. Now, when I mean half, I mean, of course, the Lib Dems, because the two main parties are always Labour and Conservative. It's either one or the other who always get to become uh, the government. And the Lib Dems are they're just there for comedy value, really. Because, come on, let's face it, nobody ever takes them seriously. And so it's been the Conservative Party now for the best part of 12 years. And they're doing what they've always done, and that is fix Labour's problems by introducing massive cuts in public spending, uh, austerity, and they just go too deep. And the longer the Conservatives are in power, the deeper they cut, and then it becomes too much for the public, and out of desperation, they vote in Labour. And then, believe me or not, things can actually get worse, because Labour then comes in, they dabble with social engineering, woke policies, and then huge spending thanks to huge borrowing, and then that puts the country in debt. The public have enough of them, and then they vote in the Conservatives, so it's like a vicious circle. And it's near impossible to get these two parties off the perch, so to speak. Because for that to happen, to nudge them off the political pyramid here in the UK, literally everyone has to not vote for them and vote for alternatives. However, saying that, where the hell do people like me go to vote? Because I am politically homeless. I am a proud British unionist. I am a libertarian. I believe in less government interference in people's lives. And I passionately believe in free speech and democracy. I also believe the customs, traditions, culture, uh, history, languages of this island, they need to be preserved. Hence, I am a true conservative because I believe I have inherited something that's valuable, enriching, and it's something worth fighting for. But there's no political party here in the United Kingdom that really encapsulates all that or believes in the same thing. And so because of our political system, we've ended up with Liz Truss as Prime Minister. I still maintain, though, that she was the better choice between her and Rishi Sunak. And the problem with him was that he was just blatantly out in the open dodgy. The guy was a tax cheat. He used his position as Chancellor of the Exchequer to uh, enable that to happen. And not only for him, but for his uh, multi-millionaire wife as well. Now, all this happens is because MPs get a lavish lifestyle. They get paid extremely well. They vote in a rather large pay increase for each other every year. And they enjoy a huge amount of privilege simply because of the job that they do. And so it all boils down to the money. It's not about civic duty. It's not about patriotism. It's not about loyalty either. Because recently, MPs in Parliament have shown themselves up to be really selfish bastards. They have even committed crime and stolen from the British taxpayer. And they get away with it. And they behave like nothing's ever happened or nobody's noticed. And so look at Liz Trust today. When she does press uh, interviews or when she's speaking in Parliament, Prime Minister's Question Time, she literally looks like she hasn't got a clue what she's doing or where she is. And it is quite clear that her party have forcibly taken the reins of leadership away from her. I mean, she stands there on telly with a vacant look on her face. I mean, she reminds me of that kid in school who's been told to go up in front of everyone at the school assembly in the morning, up on stage, and read a passage from a, uh, for a presentation. And they haven't got a fucking clue. They don't want to be there. And also, I think she showed what she was all about when she excluded a certain very important demographic from her government. And she picked Quasi Quarteng to be a Chancellor of the Exchequer. I mean, my God, the man couldn't even keep a straight face and was giggling like a schoolboy during the Queen's funeral. The guy was privileged enough to have a seat amongst the high and mighty in Westminster Abbey and he sat there giggling and couldn't keep a straight face. How disrespectful and disgusting was that? And also, it turns out he's uh, rather shit when it comes to maths. But the Conservative Party now, because of all this circus, it's an embarrassment. And it's not just an embarrassment to them. It's an embarrassment for Parliament and it's an embarrassment for the whole country. The whole world is looking in on this and they are laughing their tits off. I mean, we're meant to be Great Britain. We are meant to stand for something. And these fools, these greedy clowns in Parliament, they're allowed to... 
uh, run roughshod over this country. It should not be allowed. It needs to be ended. This system of politics here in the United Kingdom needs to change and change for the better and change to benefit the people. And maybe, just maybe, it is time for a direct democracy and remove all these privileges from MPs and put them on the minimum wage. And you just watch, when that happens, how quickly things will change. Now, the writing's on the wall for Liz Truss. She will not be Prime Minister for very long. I believe her reign will be quite short. And it's a matter of when, not if, uh, she leaves. And I believe it's a certain financial privilege that she will receive if she resigns sometime after the 6th of November, at the least. Because back in 1990-91, when Margaret Thatcher was ousted from 10 Downing Street, Parliament introduced and voted in a public duties cost allowance, which is roughly £120,000 a year for life, forever. And that's for former Prime Ministers, and she'll only get that if she resigns after two months, and then she will receive that money, that pocket money, for the rest of her life. So Liz Truss will still be Prime Minister until the 6th of November at least, so she can get that money. And then she'll be out on her arse, and they'll replace her, and I believe they'll replace her with Jeremy Hunt. Because Jeremy Hunt, (laughs) after being drafted in as Chancellor, has literally taken over. And this is the guy, folks, who oversaw the worst period in the history of the NHS and austerity back in 2010. And mark my words, he'll bring it in again. So believe me when I say there is no alternative. And if you think all the patriotic uh, right-wing parties are going to join up, create a super party and romp to victory, you've got another thing coming. They won't work together. And even some of them, they're quite questionable as well. And so to the end, you know, I don't know what to suggest. It'll always be Conservative and Labour at the very top. And their privileges are just too good to get rid of them. And one last thing before I go. Remember, I'm not a political expert. All I am is a social commentator with opinions. And if Liz Truss does stick around after the 6th of November and she makes it as Prime Minister, well, I'm obviously wrong, aren't I? And I'm happy to admit that. After all, I'm only human and I do get things wrong. Remember, one of our greatest Prime Ministers ever, the Iron Lady herself, Margaret Thatcher, she was in a very tight spot, a bit of a bother, when she first became Prime Minister. And the Conservatives were looking at getting rid of her as well. They were going to out her until the Falklands War saved her Premiership, saved her career, and the rest is history. Who knows, the same could happen to Liz Truss, but... uh, Liz Truss is no Iron Lady. And that's that. That's my video. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Any suggestions now to fix this political mess are all welcome. So until my next video, look after yourselves. Have a great day and Roger Trout.